In the previous video we talked about how we can use Bauer to install front-end based packages. Composer is a package manager or a dependency manager focused specifically on PHP. To install Composer it's simply a matter of downloading the files which you download by selecting Composer setup.exe here and then running the actual application. The installation process is extremely simple. It's just a matter of clicking next until you reach the screen where you need to select your PHP location. And here you need to select a valid php.exe file. Before finishing the installation process. Once installed, you can access Composer from a terminal or a command line. The preference is up to you, although I'm going to be using a terminal here. And it's accessed simply by typing Composer. And then the commands that you want to type. So as you can see, it lists a whole host of commands and how to use them. You'll also notice that I've created a folder called Composer Example. Which is just an empty folder at the moment. As with Bauer, the process of initialising a new project is simple. And it's achieved by typing Composer in it, which will present you with a list of questions which are required in order for you to actually go ahead and create the relevant files. As you can see, the actual process can be quite restrictive and it does enforce rules as tightly as possible. For example, you can see here that it's requiring that we use lowercase for the package name. A lot of the options, as with Bauer, can be left empty. And again, as with Bauer, it integrates with things like Git, because the packages expect you to actually use Git. And obviously, in order for it to be able to pull packages from Git, it needs Git installed. One difference between Composer and Bauer is that it actually asks you if you want to install dependencies during the initialization stage. In this case I'm going to select yes and I'm going to search for a package, specifically the Laravel package. Composer is going to return a list to us of all of the available results and we're just going to select the first one which is zero which is the full Laravel installation. It's then going to ask us for the version that we're going to require and we can leave that blank and just get the latest version. When we've selected all of the packages that we want it's simply a matter of hitting enter again and searching for nothing. And then we're going to be asked if we want to install any dependencies specific to the development environment. So for example we could install some tests associated with packages which will then allow us to work in a test driven development methodology if that's what we wanted to do. I'm just going to select no here. As with Bauer we're then presented with a JSON file which is going to be created and hitting enter confirms that that's valid. If we open the folder up we can see this file which is exactly as we would expect it. We're going to require this specific package our package is called stretch example and there's our author details. When we're satisfied with the contents of the composer.json file, it's simply a matter of typing composer install, which will go ahead and download all of the requirements as we've specified them. And this process can take quite a while, especially if you're installing large repositories like the Laravel repository. Once the installation process is complete, you will see that a couple of different files have been created within your folder, specifically the vendor folder, which is most important. This is where all of the downloaded files are located. Most importantly for us is the autoload.php file. If you open this, this will actually allow us to include this single file within our PHP project. And this will then allow us to access all of the 
packages that we've downloaded without actually having to manually require each individual package. So for example, if we created an index.php file, we could simply require once the vendor autoload file. And this will autoload all of the files for us. This means that if we go ahead and add more packages in the future, or even remove packages, we then don't need to go through our project and add pointers to those new files. We simply point at the autoload file, and Composer will automatically handle the rest of it for us. So the other thing that we talked about in the previous video is the version numbers. And the exact same principles are true for Composer as they are with Bower. For example, the caret represents any updates which don't change the number on the left. We could of course use the tilde, which has similar functionality, as we talked about in the previous video. And of course we can use greater than and equal to, as well as ranges. For example, we could do anything above or equal to version 5 or to not version 6. We can even do previous versions as we did with Bower and we can use Composer Update as we used Bower Update to actually update our repositories. Because the files are so much bigger with things like Composer because the files are all server-side and so the size of the files is not a concern. I'm not going to actually do this, but Composer Update is how you go about updating the files. Because before GitHub, a lot of PHP packages were distributed across different platforms, a website called Packages exists, which allows you to search for different files and different packages which can all be used in conjunction with Composer. So if we wanted to search for Laravel here, you can see that we have the same options appear as we found when we were installing the dependency initially. And of course you don't need to know the name of the package that you're searching for. You could for example just search for PDF, which will return any files which have PDF in the title. And as you can see there are a whole host of different packages which allow you to convert from HTML to PDF. So let's for example add this first package to our repository. So that if we wanted to include this in our project we could do so. The first thing that you'll see is that the different tags as you would expect to see within GitHub are all displayed separately. This is because you obviously want to be able to limit specific versions or be on the main development branch. We're simply just going to copy and paste this code here which is simply the repository name with the version number and you can see here it has some requirements for example PHP 5.3. We simply need to add the package to our compose.json file in a comma separated list as you would normally expect within a JSON file. And then within the terminal it's simply a matter of typing composer update. Because of the time it will take to actually run the composer update command I'm going to cancel this. But that would normally download the files into the vendor file. It would create a new folder for the actual package which would go here and it will update the auto load file with a new path to the new files. In the next video we're going to look at more historical ways to install PHP packages, which is with pair. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that.